welcome back to The Metal Hunter. My name is Luke. Um, it's time for my first ever Q&A. Um, I've seen a lot of other YouTubers do this and um, I think it's a great way to kind of get into uh, a conversation, um, open up a bit of a dialogue between uh, my viewers and myself, um, maybe answer, answer some questions that I don't cover in my, uh, in my regular episodes. Um, I've got a bunch of great questions to answer tonight. Um, I took the long weekend off. I had a bit of uh, personal stuff that I had to deal with, um, but I'm back to it and there'll be plenty of videos coming. So as usual, I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers in 90 days. So make sure that if you like what you see, smash that, uh, smash that subscribe button. Um, also in the background, we have Watain Sworn to the, Bla uh, Sworn to the Dark. Uh, this one came out in 2007 on Season of Mist, um, a fantastic black metal band. Um, probably one of my favorites of the newer bands that, um, that have come out. I mean, they're relatively new when it comes to a lot of, a lot of the scene. Um, so yeah, I definitely enjoy them. I've been listening to quite a bit of them lately, Lawless Darkness, and their last one, which I can't remember what it was called, Trident Wolf Eclipse, um, which came out a couple of years ago, which I really enjoyed. Was it a couple of years ago, 2018, I think this one came out? Let's say it was 2018. <laughs> uh, so as I said, I've got a lot of fantastic questions um, to answer. Um, a couple I'll, um, I'll deep dive into, a couple I'll keep nice and quick. Um, there is one particular question in here that I will be making, actually there's a couple of questions in here where I'll be making full videos about, um, but I will touch on them in this video. So firstly, uh, Kimberly and Benny have asked me two questions. Um, shout out to Benny for, for a long time viewership if you haven't seen my cold chamber loco um video on behalf of benny uh, i'll link it up there or whichever side it pops up on um his first question is a great question to get started on um how did you get into metal um i always liked heavy rock when i was younger um you know i liked bands like the eagles i guess they're not really heavy rock um but i liked the eagles and um fleetwood mac and uh, i was really into the presidents of the usa so i I really liked like rock music and things like that. Um, and around year five, I discovered Metallica. I was obsessed with The Unforgiven 2. I thought that was like the best song ever. Um, and then in year seven, uh, when I met, met my best mate, Adam, um, we both started getting into metal around the same time. Um, I got a VHS copy of um, Crusty Demons of the Dirt, I think it was part three, and it had a ministry song on it, which was kind of cool, but it also had a White Zombie song on it. Um, now, the White Zombie track um, was uh, a game changer for me. Um, the album Astro Creep 2000, pull this one out. It's actually just had a birthday, so a fantastic record, one of the first metal albums I ever bought, um, and basically it was all over from there. Myself and my friend Adam we basically just always wanted to get into heavier bands and faster bands and we were showing each other bands and, and um, you know, one thing led to another. We listened to Korn and then we listened to Slayer, then we listened to Morbid Angel, then we listened to fucking Deicide and it just kept on going and going and going. And we're basically the same, uh, the same way now. Um, we still show each other bands and show each other uh, albums that we really like. Um, so it's really good to um, have that camaraderie um, with, um, with metal as well. Um, the other question that uh, Kimberly and Benny have asked is, what's the best concert you've ever been to? I've been to see thousands of bands. Um, the list of bands that I haven't seen compared to the bands that I have seen is getting pretty much, I'm, I'm down to like maybe two handfuls worth of, worth of bands that I need to see that are still current. Um, but the best concert that I've ever seen was Vark in 2009. Um, headlined by Heaven and Hell, Machine Head, Saxon, Motorhead, bands like Napalm Death, Gamma Ray, Nevermore, Heaven Shall Burn. Man, I could go on and on and on. I also got to see Insidious Disease, which was absolutely incredible. They're a, a, a super group with members of Dimmu Bulger and Napalm Death and uh, a couple other bands. Um, watching Dio sing for Heaven, at, Heaven and Hell was one of the um, quintessential moments in my life. Um, it was absolutely, absolutely spectacular and very special. I met some people that I still talk to to this day, um, and some of my fondest memories is from that festival. Absolutely incredible. If anyone gets a chance to go to Varken, it is the pinnacle of heavy metal festivals. Um, now, my best mate Adam has asked, what decade do you think had the best metal and why? Um, this is something that I think about all the time. Um, you know, uh, as you guys probably know, I do like to celebrate the 
the history of heavy metal and I talk about bands from like basically from every generation of heavy metal. Um, but when it really boils down to it, I've got to say the 80s. It's got to be, it's got to be the 80s. Um, the 80s had, it was the birth of thrash, it was the birth of death metal, and it was the birth of black metal. Um, and I think a lot of bands were doing things that they couldn't necessarily get away with in the 70s or they weren't at that point yet. Um, and the 90s kind of took a little bit of a, a grungy kind of new metal um, thing. I think a lot of people were jumping onto as many band bag, bandwagons as they could so then they can get um, record sales up. Um, the 2000s was cool. Uh, you know, a lot of the metallic hardcore that was coming out was very, very interesting. But man, 80s thrash, 80s death metal and 80s black metal is perfect. Um, so that's got to be it. Uh, now, one of my longtime viewers, Damned Psyche, uh, he's got a great question. Now, I'm going to read the full question out to you because it's actually really well worded. Uh, my question touches upon your mention of Australian bands, and this very well may be a question that is not possible to quantify. At any rate, since you live there, this is the question. For many of us metal fans, it's readily apparent that Australia produces an insanely high number per capita of quality and brutal metal bands and content. Do you have any insight or ideas as to what it, why that is the case? Man, it's worded so well, but I just can't fucking read. My head is fucked. Um, Look, to be honest with you, I've thought about this for a while, and this is a this is something that I'm going to be um, deep diving into. I will have a full episode. Actually, I probably will put it across a couple of episodes. I might have to go through deco decade by decade um, uh, on Australian music. Um, I think that it, it's a couple of things. Um, one thing, um, we don't have a great deal of pressure in Australia to... Um, to follow trends, um, there are some trendy bands, there are some bands that you're putting out records, you know, heavy records that are, are following things, bands like um, The Amity Affliction, um, they they tend to, to do fairly trendy, hardcore kind of stuff, you know, they're, they're, they are what they are, they're not really for me, I didn't mind some of their earlier records and I remember seeing them quite a few times and they were, they were entertaining. Um, but then we've got bands that are doing their own thing, they're doing stuff that aren't, isn't really influenced by anything outside of outside of Australia, which are bands like Psychroptic and Nia Bliviscarius and um, Munt from Melbourne, who are fantastic. There are bands that are, are, are drawing influence from from band, from like, you know, international bands, European bands and American bands and, you know, um, all that kind of stuff. But I really think that because it, there isn't this huge gawking eye on Australia when it comes to the Australian metal scene, it, it affords them the ability to artists to be able to just do whatever the fuck they want. I think also the other the other part of it is that we have a really healthy pub scene in Australia. So, um, and even, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we actually had a really good youth um, scene. So youth venues would put on hardcore shows and you'd get those metalcore bands that would come in and then you'd get the heavier bands that would play with the hardcore bands because our hardcore scene was actually, it actually is still pretty good. You know, there are fantastic bands coming out, obviously, Parkway Drive are like one of the biggest bands on the planet. Um, and then you've got bands like Polaris um, and yeah, lots of fantastic hardcore bands. And I think that uh, a lot of it really comes from the ability to to play. The, we, we've got plenty of venues that will put bands on no matter what. Like if you guys, if you suck, if you, you're you awesome, if you want to play the same venue every week forever, you can do that. Um, I think that there's a lot of flexibility within our scene. Um, unfortunately, I only know more so about the East Coast because that's where I live. Um, you know, the, the Brisbane, Sydney, uh, Melbourne and Newcastle scene. Um, there is great scenes in uh, Adelaide and Perth, but I can't really talk on their behalf so much. But there are some absolutely astonishing bands coming out of there and I am going to do a full video on them probably in the next couple of weeks. I don't know when I'll get to it, but it'll come. If, if you want to hear about that, make sure that you subscribe. I um, better get some water into me, hey? Okay, my friend Mardo, who um, I uh, love to hate and hate to love, uh, he's a very good friend of mine. Uh, he is um, he's someone that I agree with, but I love to disagree with. We, we get into some fa fairly heated banter. Um, I think he's, I think I'm about 10 years older than him, maybe, maybe a little bit less. So I see a lot of things through maybe a different lens. Um, but he's got three questions for me. Um, so his first question is an incredible question and something that I'd really love to do a deep dive on. Um, why do you think metal has developed such an elitist and exclusive culture? Great question. Uh, 
I actually think that it hasn't really developed anything. I think that the elitism is something that's ingra ingrained into every, every part of the history of heavy metal. Um, I think it's because it's such an extreme music, an extreme music style, it brings out extreme opinions. You know, there's a lot of a lot of parts of metal that have some really ridiculous fucking ideas, racism, sexism, all that kind of bullshit. Um, it, it's just the extremity of people, and I think also because heavy metal and extreme metal, especially, is so um, difficult for for people to listen to. I mean, you and I might might be a little bit different. You know, Mato, I know that you've heard some extreme stuff. I know that all the guys that are watching, guys and girls that are watching at the moment, have heard some extreme stuff. But if you show this to a normie, it's not really like easy to get into. It's not digestible. It's 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 extreme. So. Um, I think that, that that personality comes from the music and I think that personality comes from the people that are into the music. I, for one, think that elitism uh, and exclusivity is fucking stupid. Um, as I said before, I come from a little bit more of a hardcore background, so a lot of the hardcore bands were all about, even though deep down they probably weren't, but they were more so singing about um, helping people out and you know being about um, family and friends and, and that that's the bottom line. So. Um, whenever I hear anyone gatekeeping, anyone that's saying like, you can't listen to this band or this band's shit or, you know, anyone that goes on about like saying like, oh, Slipknot sucks or Korn sucks or Linkin Park sucks or talks about like bands that suck or aren't like pure metal, they, it's all a fucking, it's a bunch of fluff. Who gives a fuck? You're going to listen to whatever you want to listen to when you get home. Like that's, that's all, all that matters is your opinion and how you feel about yourself when you're listening to that music because that's all that matters to me, really. Uh, I'd love to do a deep dive on that one as well. What is your favorite of the non-metal genres? Non-metal genres. New metal, metalcore, deathcore, black gaze, etc. The non-metal genres. I would say probably it'd be close between new metal and metalcore. I think new metal really was the gateway for me. Um, it was the thing that got me... You know, obviously there was White Zombie, and then after that it was very much Corn, Limp Biscuit, Linkin Park, bands like that of that ilk kind of then pushed me. I always loved the heavy riff, and I always loved that kind of deeper vocal, and that kind of pushed me towards like heavier music. So I guess new metal would probably be it. Black Gaze is awesome as well. There's a lot of fantastic bands in that genre. Uh, Mato's third and final question is, do you find yourself more excited to hear bands you're unfamiliar with or do you find it easier to stick with your old favorites? Um, a part of the reason that I started doing this reaction channel was um, to find new bands. Uh, I've always been, I've always prided myself on being able to find out about new bands and then show other people new bands. Um, whenever people send me messages, and I get messages all the time, uh, from people who are like, what's a band that I need to, to listen to? What's an album? I'm in this mood. I need to hear this and blah, blah, blah. I've always prided myself just having those answers and just knowing what people want to hear. Um, I am, I went through a, I went through a really big phase where I wouldn't listen to anything, anything new, anything past kind of like 2005 and 2006. This was a couple of years ago. Um, so I think I really burnt myself out with my old favorites. Um, don't get me wrong. I still want to listen to Pantera and I still want to listen to Slayer and I still want to listen to Cradle of Filth and, you know, the bands that, um, really got me into metal, but finding new bands is, is incredible. And, you know, you never know when you're going to find your brand new favorite band. You know, you might be set in your ways. You might think this is my favorite band and I'm going to love this band forever. They're going to be the number one, but you never know what's around the corner. So keep your ears open. Okay, so I've got another couple of I've got a couple of questions from my, my friend Corey. <laughs> What's some of your favorite non-metal artists? Man, probably gonna get roasted for this, but uh, let's have a quick look. I am a big hip hop fan. Um, I've really been loving J. Cole's KOD album, is that what it's called? Yeah, KOD. Um, I've also been loving this is one of my favorite hip hop albums of all time. This is a little bit more poppy out. Um, because of the internet by a childish Gambino. Um, I like, um, I've been listening to a lot of Cosmo, Cosmo Sheldrake lately. He's got this incredible way to produce, um, like really, really lush organic sounds. And he's got a, like a kind of a cool voice. You know, I, I listen to a bit of Indian stuff like that. 
Um, man, there's a, there's a lot. I love Elton John. I love the Eagles still. I love a lot of older older style music. There's actually a whole section of my record collection which is just old old bands like Toto and um, Boston and like that classic AOR kind of style. So there's a, there's a lot of different styles that I listen to, but my main focus my main focus is heavy metal. Uh, let's have a quick look here. Next question from Corey is, what's some of the best up and coming Australian metal bands? I mentioned them before. This is a band called Munt. Now these guys are from Melbourne. I saw them in the front room of the Hamilton Station Hotel in Newcastle with about seven people in front of us, or in front of them, I should say. Absolutely fucking blew me away. I couldn't believe the absolute uh, dirge that was coming off the, off the stage. It was so evil and so heavy. Uh, from my local area, I would say there's a band called Pure Envy, who are an incredible thrash metal band. There's a band called Carnal Viscera, who are from the Central Coast, um, my area, kind of an hour away. They do like brutal death metal. Um, Tom's one of one of the best dudes uh, on the planet, um, and you know he's he's always helping me out with um with new bands to find out about in the in the scene. Uh, there's a band called Strip the Dog who are from Port Macquarie, I want to say. There's also a band called Volatile Ways who are fantastic. Um, they're a four-piece hardcore band uh, made up of, or heavy hardcore band. They're made up of members of The Wandering and also Honest Crooks, who are two fantastic bands that you should check out. Um, Honest Crooks, I've got to got to give a huge shout out to those guys. I absolutely love them. Um, and when it comes to less of a metal band, there's a band called Hellions from Sydney who I absolutely love. I think that they are more of a they're more of a punk hardcore kind of band, but they they're really pushing their sound out um, a, a lot. And um, obviously Polaris are, are doing wonderful things. Um, they're not exactly who I listen to, but I know that um, every time a track comes out, I give them a, give them a listen, and I know that they're doing the right thing. Um, just not necessarily my my style. All right, my uh, beautiful wife Carly has asked, if you could craft an all-star lineup from any musicians throughout history, who would the band members be and what would be the name of their debut album? Okay, so Dimebag would be on guitar, no no question. I would have Peter Steele on bass and um, backup vocals. Um, and then I would have, man, I would have Skylar Kroom from He Is Legend on vocals. Um, and then I would have, fuck, who would I have on drums? Hmm. Uh, maybe Igor Cavalera. Man, that guy can play. Um, and I would have uh, the dude from ELO on keyboards. <laughs> Just to spice it up a little bit, that's, that's there's something different. There you go. What would their debut album be called? Uh, it'd be called uh, "How the Fuck Are These Guys Alive Again?" Now, what would the album be called? I think the album would be called something like "Tumultuous" because I'm pretty sure that those kinds of sessions would be quite tumultu tumultuous, especially with uh, all the different styles coming in. Um, all right, cool. That was a that was a great question from my my beautiful wife. Um, she's really been putting up with me lately, um, especially just talking at her about heavy metal. Okay, very, very good friend of mine, Adam Hyde. Um, he runs a podcast called uh, Soda and Telecasts. Uh, it's for all your nerdy needs. Um, they're talking uh, about comic books and TV shows and uh, a bunch of different things. If you're into that kind of stuff, you should check out uh, his podcast um, with another friend of mine, Anthony. Uh, I'll link that down below. He's got a bunch of great questions for me. I won't get too much into all of these questions because I don't want to take take up all the time in the world, um, but I will go through a few of them. Uh, favorite heavy dark or heavy slash dark movie movie soundtracks? Okay, I've got two that come to mind. Um, one is the Freddy vs. Jason soundtrack is fucking awesome. Um, so many great um, bands. Uh, I think most of the bands were on Roadrunner Records because I think Roadrunner had the licensing for that um, release. So it was like Spine Chain, Kill Switch, Engage, uh, just a bunch of awesome bands on that on that one. Um, the other one I would say would be um, Queen of the Damned. Uh, listening to Jonathan Davis's voice um, with that more gothic kind of orchestral kind of thing was was beautiful, and uh, I still listen to that album to this day. 
Uh, now that the old guard are coming to an end, who do you think the future stadium heavy bands are? Well, I think um, I think Slipknot are already basically there. I was watching some footage of the 2019 uh, headline set at uh, Download Fest, which has only just come out. Um, I think that that that's absolutely um, they're absolutely up there, and they're already kind of already kind of pushing pushing their way up there. Um, I think Trivium really have it. You know, they're not necessarily a band that I listen to a lot of, but I've been trying to go back and listen to their some of their older stuff, especially because my friend Mardo is very much into them. Um, you know, there there could be an argument for a band like Avenged Sevenfold. Um, they don't they aren't necessarily releasing stuff that I I like anymore. Um, the only album that I am absolutely frothing over them, well, there's two or three, but this is this is the album for me when it comes to Avenged Sevenfold. Um, everything after that, I think that they've gone. You know, City of Evil was really really good. Um, after that, they kind of they they've been doing whatever they're doing. And I, I, look, it is what it is. I, I like a lot of the songs. I like a lot of the albums. But overall, um, I think that they're more going in that poppy kind of way. And, um, you know, I think that that's one of those bands that might be able to um, to, to hit the stadiums. Um, bands like Baroness and Mastodon, I think that they definitely have a, a lot of ability to do that. A band like Gojira definitely has um, a lot of ability to do that. Um, who else? I think maybe Arch Enemy. Arch Enemy are pretty good. Like, you know, they're, they're uh, an accessible metal band. They're not someone who, you know, um, is too hard to listen to when it comes to that kind of, that kind of style. Um, Bring to the Horizon, I don't know. They've gone off in a completely different tangent. Whether they come back to metal or not, I don't know. Um, but they're already, they're already doing stadiums. But when it comes to, like, heavy metal and thrash metal... There's not really anyone else I can think of. I'm sure that you guys can comment down below and let me know anyone that I've missed. Um, I would love, and I've mentioned them a million times before, I would love to see He Is Legend headlining places. I don't know why that band isn't bigger than they actually are. They're a fantastic heavy rock band or metal band, whatever you call them, um, with a lot of soul. So, um, yeah. Uh, Deftones as well. Like, I'm actually just kind of glancing over at my... My download fest poster, RIP. Deftones should be up there, absolutely. Um, and I'll, I'll answer maybe two more questions from Adam. So he's got the question, what does Corey think? Man, I'd love to know what Corey thinks. Um, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, Corey Taylor has a has a has an opinion on everything. So um, I guess, I don't know, he probably he probably wouldn't like my, my channel. Well, maybe he would, I don't know. He gets pretty excited about things. I did get to meet him Oh, it was maybe about eight years ago, something like that. Um, him and in the clown, um, Corey did a signing for his book, which uh, is somewhere over there, and uh, I got to meet him, and that was pretty cool. Um, but not sure what Corey thinks. Uh, okay, so uh, this one, actually, I might answer both of these because this, and then I'll I'll just wrap it up. Uh, will local scenes recover after the lockdowns, or will this be a heavy blow on what is often a difficult time for live music? Um, you know, I've been really thinking about it and I've actually been having withdrawals from going to, to shows. You know, I, I'm someone who goes to shows regularly, as in sometimes it's two or three times a week. I go to as many shows as I possibly can. Um, I often review for Insert Review here. Um, if you haven't followed those guys already, you definitely should. Um, I think that local scenes is where it's actually going to thrive again. I think that there's a lot of bands who haven't, really kind of stepped up to that next level yet that are able to still do their normal jobs as in they're able to go and work in factories or fucking you know work as as um, medical professionals or work as teachers or work as whatever it is whatever kind of job that they have and the music is is a hobby um really i think that what what it's going to come down to is venues whether venues can make it through if venues can make it through man there's going to be so many shows and i'm going to go to fucking every one of them I think that I think that the ingenuity of a lot of people at the moment who are creating music through te technology, um, who are writing music and creating things while they're in this lockdown at the moment, is is just a testament to to how much love there is for for heavy music. Um, I know that uh, 
old mate Heathy from Trivium is doing that Twitch channel. I know that um, old mate from Dragon Dragon Force is doing a Twitch channel as well. There's a lot of bands that are doing like festival live streaming things. You know, the, I think that heavy metal and music in general is adapting, it, it, especially when it comes to the less bloated artists, bands that are in it for the right reasons. They're they're out there and they're, they're trying to create content for, for the right reasons and, and I applaud them. So I do think that I do think that there will be a recovery. Um, it might be a slow um, a slow thing. And I think that the I actually thought about this today. I think that the biggest thing that we're going to notice as Australians is that it's going to take a long time for international bands to come back out here. I don't know if it'll be 2021, it might be 2022, it could be in the next couple of years, but I think that the, with the, all of the restrictions of the way that they are, it's going to take a long time for, for international touring bands to come out here. So I did notice that um, a Unified Festival, which happens down in, in Victoria, has already announced that next year's festival is going to be only Australian bands. So I think that they can see that coming as well. Uh, the final question from uh, Adam is, metal is more and more becoming a diverse genre of crossovers is there is there a crossover you are yet to see that you would like to see or is there one you have been particularly fond of um hmm one that i'm particularly fond of i think that anytime anyone brings uh horror into music is like horror movies into music. There's a band called Ice Nine Kills who I absolutely fucking adore. Um, I actually did a reaction for them about two years ago and I hated them at first. Uh, but once I started delving into um, their style and their lyrics and things like that, I was, I was very, very impressed. Um, I would love to see a little bit more hip hop back in metal. Um, <laughs> I know that a lot of people are probably gonna flame me on that. But the thing is like, if you get, if you, I mean, Rage Against the Machine did it. Rage Against the Machine are one of my favorite bands of all time. One of the most important bands in my life. And they did it very, very well. I think a band like Limp Bizkit did it very, very well, especially in the in the late 90s and early 2000s. Um, some of their later material isn't necessarily for me, but fantastic, fantastic um, hip hop with metal. Um, I don't, I'm not so blown away by the, I know, I know the, I know why he's asking me this question. Um, he's asking me specifically about bands like Baby Metal and, and Poppy, I, I feel like is the kind of crossover. Um, you know, I think that, uh, I, you know, I saw Poppy uh, at, uh, at Good Things last year and I thought that she was fantastic. I think that what she's doing is uh, incredible. I think that Baby Metal, uh, they've got their own part of, part of the world and I think that Rob Zombie signed off on them. So they get a thumbs up from me as well. I think that anyone who has the ability to break down the barriers, break down the walls when it comes to heavy metal is fantastic in my eyes. I think that if you can cross over and make it work and it's not forced, giddy up, I love it. Now, I'm at the end of my video. I finally got this one, um, got this one together. It took me a little while, had some, had some shit to deal with. Um, if you've got any questions for me for next week, um, I might might take a week off from the Q&As and I'll do one next week. If you've got any questions for me, drop them down in the comments down below. Um, if there's any reactions that you want me to get to, make sure that you drop them down in the comments below. Follow me on social media, Facebook and Instagram at The Metal Hunter. Um, make sure that you subscribe. As I said, I'm trying to get that 10K. Um, it's where I'm going. Uh, and yeah, I've, I've been Luke, The Metal Hunter. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.